This week, a shocking caught on camera crime in Queens. That's unheard of to do that in the church. Plus, a man stabbed in the head on a Bronx bus. People are screaming, saying like that someone got stabbed. And a convicted killer learns his fate in court. Right now, Fox 5's Crime in the City. Here are the crimes from across the five boroughs. We begin this week in Queens, where cameras capture a vicious random attack on the steps of a church. Police looking for the suspect accused of punching a 68-year-old woman, causing her to fall down the stairs at a church in Queens. Fox News Antoine Lewis joins us live from Briarwood. And Antoine, you actually talked to the pastor of the church. What's his response to what happened? Natasha, I'm going to let his words speak, which you'll just hear uh, coming up soon. But I can let you know that many of the congregants here in Queens at this church behind me are very upset. Many of them are wrestling with their faith. She's doing much better, thank God. And, you know, she's conscious, alert. She's talking. I gave her a blessing, Holy Communion. Father Constantinos Calagridis updates the condition of one of his parishioners recovering from a horrific attack at the church last weekend. On Sunday, this 68-year-old woman was on her way inside St. Demetrius Greek Orthodox Church for Holy Feast Day services when the suspect comes up from behind and cowardly attacks her, punching her in the face. The victim fell down the stairs. The suspect, true to form, took off. And then someone following her and then, you know, to do this horrendous an act of, you know, pushing her with force from the church's steps. That's unheard of, like, to do that on a on, in the church. Police say after attacking the victim, the suspect then took her purse, which had her cell phone, credit cards, and $300 cash inside. Right up here. Yes, up here. He was following her. Father Constantino says his flock is a close-knit, mostly older congregation, so news of this senseless assault has many of them shaken and very angry. We asked Father Constantino how he's been addressing those emotions. Father, part of your mission is teaching the principles of forgiveness and patience and tolerance. How have you been able to apply those as you're still leading this flock here days after this incident? The church is about love, forgiveness. Once they find this person, to make him realize his mistake, to repent for his sins and this his grievous act. Is it tough to have that type of attitude given this? It's, it's, sometimes it's not easy, but with God's help, it can be done. We want to ask Andy, our director, to put up a picture of this coward so that you can take a good look at it. And anyone with information is asked to call police. Police also are telling us that in addition to the items that were taken out of the victim's purse, he also took the keys to her car, 2006 Nissan Altima. As you come back to us live, just to put it into perspective, the victim was on her way in. She was at the top. There are five steps that she fell down. She hit her head. Police told us right before we went on the air that she is in critical but stable condition. She has a fractured skull. Again, anyone with information is asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number, 1-800-577-TIPS. Up in the Bronx, an argument between two strangers on an MTA bus takes a violent turn. A man is in the hospital tonight after getting stabbed in the head with a screwdriver on an MTA bus. All right, Fox 5's Arthur Chen has the latest from Fordham Heights, a section in the Bronx where it all unfolded. We're here on East Fordham Road at Marion Avenue, and you see the bus over here. This is around 2 o'clock that this bus was traveling westbound on this avenue when an uh, argument took place on the bus. We're told it involved a 6-year-old man and somebody else. That individual ends up pulling out a screwdriver and stabbing the 60-year-old man in the head. The bus pulls over, and this is not a stop, by the way. A number of people flee out of the bus. Some of them go into that urgent care, not to seek treatment, but to seek refuge. And here's what the scene looked like after police responded. They found the 60 year old uh, suffering uh, bleeding profusely rather from his head he was brought to Barnabas Hospital and is currently in stable condition here's one witness what one witness had to say about how it looked out here and the effort to help the victim people coming out of the bus and people screaming saying like that someone got stabbed I went inside of the of the bus and I see that he was bleeding I came down to the store grabbed some paper to bring them out and they're just telling me that a guy with a screwdriver stabbed the guy in the head, and that's it. Again, the 60-year-old victim who was stabbed in the head with a screwdriver is hospitalized right now in stable condition. We do not know his identity. We do not know the nature of the argument that took place on the bus that preceded the stabbing, but we do know that the suspect is on the loose, and police are searching for them up here.
Moving to Brooklyn, an 11-year-old boy is struck by gunfire in an Ocean Hill housing complex. Now to the 11-year-old shot in Brooklyn. Police trying to figure out exactly what led up to it. Fox 8's Michelle Ross is live at the Ocean Hill Brownsville houses where this all unfolded. Michelle, what's the latest? Natasha, Steve, a suspect has not been identified, but we are learning from sources that uh, the, the victim, the 11-year-old victim and the perpetrator are known to each other. Now, we spoke to a neighbor, an 18-year-old woman who says that she applied an improvised tourniquet to help the child once that gunshot went off. Investigators were at the Ocean Hill Brownsville houses overnight after police responded to a 911 call for a child that was shot. I heard a gunshot, so I came running outside. Fantasia Gaylord lives on the third floor, and when she opened her door, she saw a young boy she recognized in the hallway with a gunshot wound on his arm. And I saw him on the steps, so I dragged him in the house, and then I wrapped my sweater around his arm because he had a shot. It was like right here. I just wrapped it around and I held it. Outside, investigators wrapped clothing and put it in a paper bag for evidence. Inside, police say they found a bullet fragment. Fantasia says she called 911, then ran downstairs to knock on the child's relative's door. And then I was just trying to keep him, like, you know, awake while, and then I was just holding him until somebody came. And the ambulance did come, brought that boy to Maimonides Hospital, where he was last listed in stable condition. He is expected to survive. No arrests have been made. Over in Manhattan, a suspect is on the run after a stabbing outside a hotel in Hell's Kitchen. We have breaking news in Hell's Kitchen tonight. Police are searching for the suspect in a stabbing outside the Watson Hotel. They say a 35-year-old man was stabbed in the chest and arm. This was around 5.45 p.m. tonight and that the suspect fled the scene. The victim was taken to the hospital in stable condition. The Watson Hotel is being used to house migrants. Authorities have not said if either the suspect or the victim are staying at the hotel. Back in Queens, a teenager is left in critical condition following a shooting in Far Rockaway. Police are investigating the shooting of a 16 year old boy in Far Rockaway. This is Sky Fox video of the scene. The teen was shot at around 1:15 this afternoon on Mott Avenue. The boy was taken to the hospital in critical condition, but police have not updated how he's doing. If you have any information on this case, you're being asked to call Crime Stoppers. And finally, an emotional day in court as the man who fatally shot a Queens teenager is sentenced. An emotional Shaniqua Griffin could barely speak as she came face to face with her son's murderer. And as she spoke to reputed gang member Sean Brown, he stood stone faced through much of his sentencing inside Queens Criminal Court, except for when he made one last ditch effort to avoid jail time. The 21 year old gunman pleaded guilty last month to manslaughter and conspiracy to commit murder in the death of 14 year old Amir Griffin on a Queens basketball court. Brown had rejected a plea deal back in January, but then last month said he no longer wanted a trial. Today, he asked for it again, but the judge wasn't having it. Your request to uh, take, the, take this plea back is denied. Brown was sentenced to 30 years in prison. Prosecutors had said that Brown mistook Griffin, a young teen with a bright future, for a rival gang member back in October of 2019. Griffin was playing basketball with friends at the Baisley Park houses in South Jamaica when he was fatally shot, all while practicing his jump shot. Griffin had just made the junior varsity basketball team. Well, he was being recruited by high schools to play on their teams. and. He got shot simply because he was in his home court playing ball. The only way we could close, get close to Amir now is by visiting his grave. The DA says Sean Brown was rounded up a year ago in one of the largest gang takedowns in the history of her office. 33 reputed gang members were charged in a blood feud between three different rival gang members. A total of 22 shootings took place after Amir Griffin was gunned down in 2019. Another one of those was fatal. And that's this week's Crime in the City. Subscribe for more at youtube.com slash fox5ny.